Hey, everyone. And on our podcast show this week, um, another season eight podcast. Um, funny enough, last week um, <laughs> when we launched the, <laughs> the first episode of season eight, I just realized that it was season eight, yeah, episode season eight. 88. 88. Wow. Triple eight. Triple eight. So uh, it's going to be a good year, especially because we are both Asian. This may not work for <laughs> other 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 types of um, of cultures and everything like that because they don't believe in that. But for us Asians, that's super, super lucky because eight sounds like wealth. Wealth. Getting rich. So hopefully we get rich by the end of the year. But if that doesn't happen, that's okay. It's just a superstition. <laughs> At any rate, uh, we want to kind of start giving back to the mm. community a little bit. We've been doing this for about two years. This is our second year of podcasting, wow. right? Um, because we started May, like... 2022 yeah, yeah. or something like that. So this is our second May Yeah, uh, going into this. And uh, we're going to have a lot of new content for you, especially mm. as we head to Taiwan. More on that a little bit later. And But I, we wanted to kind of go back in time and look at the things mm. that have made us able to do a podcast in a sustained and consistent manner because yeah. we started on the premise that, you know, podcast needed to have a certain, we had to, had to hit minimum qualifiers in order to have the momentum necessary to mm. keep going. And we always come back to this, these stats. So the most podcasts, when they start three episodes in 90% of all podcasts fail to reach their third episode. Just they what? fail to get there, right? Three, three episodes. Three episodes and they're done. All right. <laughs> uh, and I don't know how accurate it is now. It's probably more accurate now because people are now able to talk to each other in public. They don't have to do mm. Zoom calls and everything. But, you know, that's that was an interesting stat. The, the second one that always kind of makes me go, wow, is that you've, you're 20 episodes in and another 20, 90 percent quit right after they hit episode number 20. They, 20, they just 20 quit episodes. the podcast. Right. Wow. You know, so we are almost at 100 episodes. If we if we count, if we count all the bonus episodes, bonus and special events and stuff like that, we probably hit 100 a long time ago. But going by our episode guide, going by the number of episodes, this is episode 89, uh, probably 90, because uh, we're going to talk about uh, Mm. we, we might have a current events episode in between this one and the first episode. So if that happens, uh, just don't think we jumped time. We were we were literally putting more up to date information <laughs> in front of this. So uh, don't think that we we messed up. We li- literally did this on purpose to give you more entertaining information first before we jump into something that's mm. more evergreen, like starting your own podcast in twenty twenty four. So yeah. the other funny stat is that if you want to be the in one of the top, if you want to be a top one percent podcast, top one percent, all you need is twenty one episodes. 21 episodes yeah. and you'll be in top 1% yeah. of all podcasts. <laughs> of all podcasts in the world. Wow. So the bar is low, but to get there seems a lot harder because of all the drop off. You you tend to lose attention. Yeah. And just not feeling it. I mean, heck, you know what? Winston Winston knows <laughs> I didn't really want to do a podcast, right? So <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> no. So so the motivation really needs to be strong and the process needs to allow you yeah. to yeah. put these things out every week. So Winston and I are going to go through some of the things that mm. are still working for us. Yeah. Some tweaks that we've made over the last year. That's right. And some of the things that maybe you need to hear to get your podcast off the ground in 2024. So yeah. let's go. Um, right. So of course, I admitted that I didn't want to start a podcast. And I think that motivation theme and stuff like that is something is a discussion you really needed to get out of the way in the beginning. How mm. did we have that conversation? Uh, I remember the first time I, I came over to Canada because um, I wanted to move from Hong Kong. So I came over here and I knew you were based out in Canada. And I thought, okay, let's let's see what Stephen's doing. So I kind of called you up and said, hey, Stephen, what are you doing? Let's let's have a meetup, you know, coffee, just general chat. And at the time you were just kind of moving on. To, you were transitioning, right? You were transitioning to moving to uh, do other stuff as well. You were had You had a radio show going on there. You had some video production stuff going on there. I was on a TV show and they yeah. let me go. <laughs> so, so a lot of things was happening with Steven. And then at the time um, I was transitioning as well. And I thought, okay, let's, let's, let's pool our knowledge together. Let's, you know, let's talk up something and, and do something together and call it our own. And, and uh, the idea of a podcast kind of floated around because it was a, something that we could do in our spare time. And also uh, we could, you know, meet up and regularly, which is quite good. You no. Know? And, um, 
so we started, okay, let's, let's just do a podcast. You know, it's not going to take too much of a time, but then we realized after a while that uh, actually, not just it took more than time, but it, it took a little bit of effort to kind of like gain traction and stuff like that. But still, it was the, the process of learning and actually building up this this content, which was part of the thing. It was part of the fun. I think it was it was really good. And um, I thought, you know, let's let's get Stephen out the uh, hiding spot, you know, and just trying to get him out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah I, th- I think he, uh, you know, he, he was re- reluctant at first. And then I think he saw how it kind of grew and it actually kind of like, and you were really into it then. And I thought, okay, you know, so let's let's uh, let's keep going, and here we are today. Someone has to be into it. Actually, both. If you have a co-host, <laughs> both people need to be into it. I, I, th- I think chemistry is good because uh, without the chemistry, I think it'd be difficult. Um, because if you have two uh, guys doing a podcast with op- opposing views and they're not, they don't get along, kind of thing, uh, or some bits that you know, it's just you, you got to have. I think got to have. Good connection, good chemistry. Look, look, I disagree. Right. I'm pushing against you. But I think you I th- have to have two hosts that have opposing views so that there's actually true. a little bit of conflict. That is, that's right? true. That's it, that gives you excitement in the content and stuff like that and viewers, right? It but, gives uh, you two points of view because there's always a, a I hate yeah. to say the the left and the right or the the light and the dark or that's there's, right. there's two sides to everything. But ultimately, we want to find the pros and cons of whatever we're talking about. Yeah, and maybe that's. And that should be useful to you at home because then you get both sides of the argument and then you can make your own informed decision of whether or not you, or maybe take a little bit of both of the arguments into consideration when you make a decision on a product or a service or mm. your opinion of, of certain leaders in the tech industry, <laughs> whatever, right? We yeah. both have our own opinions. So oh, yeah, I think good. I think that uh, it's probably gonna be more difficult for you to do a solo mm. podcast it because it, it's a lot of, uh, work all by yourself and you don't have someone to push against as a conf- uh, a point of conflict. All stories that are successful mm. always have a journey that ends up in some sort of conflict that you have to resolve. True. Maybe when we talk, we never resolve our conflict on this one topic, but at least we brought that into the conversation. So it's exciting. Exciting. There's yeah. some drama. Yeah. There's some drama and it's uh, opinions and stuff like that. So it's good to talk about. And, so uh, would you agree that if you were to start a podcast in 2024, you really kind of have to have uh, someone behind the scenes that kind of pushes against some of your point of view, yeah, like a get, producer or that's co-host? That's right. You've got to get some feedback and uh, some thoughts, some opposing views as well, because then you can discuss things like that, right? Uh, but if you were on your own doing your podcast, you just, you're speaking to the camera and that's it. It's quite difficult, right? Yeah. I've seen but, a lot of the podcasts that you, you think that are solo podcasts that have guests and whatnot. The producer is always behind this. Like even even the Joe Rogan or or uh, Michael Rosenbaum mm-hmm. the, or, or whatever, they always have their producer whispering in their ear or their or they say, hey, hey, Joe you know, or, 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 or Steve, what do you think about this? And they're actually talking to the producer or the cam op mm-hmm. or, or whoever as a as a second person to actually kind of, um, you know, air their point of view and get an opposing uh, thought, even though that person isn't officially a co-host yeah, of yeah. the show, but they are a part of the show. And I think that is very important. It's part of the, the production crew, right? It's part of the production yeah. value. It's yeah. also part of uh, just, there's a team behind it and knowing who the team members are that make the show, I think is uh, is very interesting for a lot of people as mm. well too. And having that uh, other point of view because they listen to everything. They know what's going on with the show. Uh, it, it, and it's funny, right? Sometimes they're also the fact checkers. Like, um, um, Joe, you got that th- fact wrong. It's actually not that at all. You mean I screwed up? Yes, you screwed up royally. <laughs> okay, <laughs> they right? Go on the Google, they yeah, the I mean, we should Google <laughs> this, right? And sometimes they can't. They're already in their train of thought and it doesn't happen. All right. So success Mm. in 2024 requires a podcast co-host or a production team or someone just in your ear to help you with the fact checking and everything like that. Yeah. Because if you said to me, um, I was going to do a podcast podcast on my own, I I don't think I would have, like I said, two episodes in or three episodes in, I'll probably just quit because I got nothing to go against. You have one point of view. Yeah. And And is that interesting? No, he's just talking. He's just listening to me or listening to Stephen on his own. It's just... Unless you really like talking to yourself, and I don't <laughs> think a lot of people do, but if you talk to yourself, you're actually talking to another voice, which is weird. Yeah, so you should get that looked after as well, to, too. <laughs> you're talking to uh, your followers that probably just- Your internal echo chamber, and that's just not good. 
right? Yeah. You never get new information and new ideas. Okay. Mm. So mm. we both agreed on that. That's yeah. good. Having a co-host and everything is, is a good idea or it's just someone doing the production in behind the scenes mm. that you can riff off of as you need to in 2024. And uh, in 2024 is definitely the year for getting podcasts going because I'm seeing so many uh, XTV and, and media personalities starting yeah. Their, yeah. their podcast. Um, Dawn, I can't, I'm not going to butcher her last name, Dawn Chub Chubai, uh, a local TV host. Uh, she does QVC and everything like that. Mm -hmm. She does sales uh, to QVC. Uh, she's one of the hosts there. Um, she's starting her own podcast now. Oh, right. Um, so that's a big deal for, for her. She's a personality that is actually recognized. So uh, people are jumping away yeah. from radio. They're going straight to podcast. Yeah, I noticed a lot of the, um, you know, in terms of celebrities and stuff like that. So a lot of the, the uh, what back in the 80s and 90s film stars back then, really big. Then moving on to like, you know, into the 90s, 2000s and 2010s and then they you know they're grown up they're yeah. they're aged so so you know they're doing a podcast i think that and they have a, a fan of followers right so i think that that really helps um i remember um there was another movie film star back in the 90s uh and they started his own podcast uh even all the um all the smallville crew right remember yeah, yeah. michael rosenbaum yeah, has his own uh it um Inside of me or something, something me. Yeah. Uh, I've only seen a few episodes of this podcast. I should really watch it more often, but he definitely, he often does have Tom Welling or yeah, Kristen Crook right. on the show to yeah. kind of talk about the good old days of the show. Uh, it's amazing how, how the fandom has actually really embraced it. Cause they, true. even though they're telling the same stories, they tell it a different way every single time. Yeah. And it's kind yeah. of, it's interesting to and hear about the behind the scenes. That's right. Cause uh, they talk about episodes and stuff like that they've done. And then bloopers and they, uh, yeah, bloopers. And they think about, oh, oh, what could have happened differently or what could have filmed differently, yeah. how the story could have ended differently. So a different type of, uh, you know, views and- Or opportunities they never took because Michael yeah. Rosenbaum wasn't actually part of the uh, the uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, which was a uh, mashup of uh, of The Flash, mm. um, Superman show, Supergirl. They all came together and they had multiple- Multiverses. Like a multiverse. Yeah. Not a multiverse, but the multiverse. Multiverse. And uh, they had all these Supermans from all different parts. And Clark Kent from Smallville was actually yeah, there. He yeah. still never wore the uniform. He never did. But, you, you know- did. Lex Luthor never showed up. All right. Yeah, like Michael Rosenbaum w was supposed to do a part in mm. this, but they weren't going to pay him. And he he, he talked about that as well oh, too, I think right. one, of, one of his yeah, episodes, yeah. I caught yeah. that. So yeah, a lot of really great um, content is coming out uh, from these personalities, which mm. already have a following. And they're not they're not into a radio show. They're not even into Sirius XM or anything like that. They're literally doing their own thing on a podcast and they're gaining um, their followership through that, which is their own thing. They don't yeah, have to. Yeah. Um, uh, they don't have to make a radio station happy. They don't have to make a radio network happy. They just have to make their fans happy. And that's I true. think that's, that's true. So here, that's, that's I think that's better because it is. If, it is. If you if you work for a radio station or a, or a TV station, there it is like uh, lots of lots of guidelines, politics, and rules, politics, and stuff like that. Red right? Tape. Yeah, and you can't connect with the fans because it's broadcast to a mass audience. Yeah. So with, with a podcast, you're actually talking direct to your fans and uh, the fans that follow you and stuff like that. So yeah, you right there. <laughs> yeah. And you, and you, and you. Yeah. <laughs> See, creepy. I know. So um, in order to get to this point where you are able to talk every mm. week, there's a framework. Uh, it's yeah. something that we've been refining. And, you know, we've, even though some weeks you might not even know this, but we've basically gone off the script or we didn't actually have one. You could never tell. At least I hope you didn't. Um, because the rundown, which is uh, basically our outline, is still very, very important I, to us. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and definitely. if we don't have one, you kind of, I think you can tell that we don't have one versus the ones where we did have one. If you can, if you can point out those shows, leave a comment below. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we've always had um, an idea chart. I know that the ideas are mm. coming more fast and furious these days. So we might have five or six ideas already. Like, hey, uh, I'm already starting this rundown, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we used to put them on a spreadsheet. Now we have way more ideas uh, in the pipe that we, we don't have to go back to the well anymore. Yeah. So if you are starting a podcast and you want to get to 100 episodes, put 100 ideas down first. Mm. And once you exhaust most of them and you don't, then you can start looking out, outwards or 
use that use that well of 100 ideas yeah. and start adding ideas that were never on there and maybe doing those first and then coming back to the well after because then mm. you always have a fallback point when you can't come up with your own ideas because yeah. you you might have never done one of these shows in the past it's like maybe maybe it's time to do this one let's let's work on that so 100 ideas always important to starting a podcast in 2024 uh rundowns also very very important every single idea is not a show until it has a rundown yeah, okay yeah. because it's your roadmap from to wind that river from the beginning to the end and if you take a little turn in the detour in the middle you can always get back on track. Uh, you should also have your first 10 shows kind of already done because again, the first three shows of most podcasts end up in failure 90% of the time because you don't you don't continue. Mm. And if you had your first 10 shows already recorded, you're basically already half done. And then by the time you start releasing them, you have all this extra time to do two shows a week to kind of get up to your 20. That's true, that's right? true. So if you make it to 20 already, you're going to be a one percent yeah, podcast and, at twenty one. That's right, and I think I think uh, make it regular. Um, you know, if you could do it weekly, uh, or even like record two shows in the week. Yeah, we batch record two shows. So today yeah. we'll record two, uh, and maybe out of order. Uh, so if if we're recording two shows, one of them we may place in front of another one, or a couple of weeks from now mm. because it's a more evergreen content. But this is your backup plan every week to have one to show and one to go. Right, yeah, so it's yeah. basically like a shoe store. You always have the display in Saran Wrap, and then you have one ready to sell. Mm, true, right? So same yeah. thing, right? Yeah, and that and that helps you with your inventory, which is also your podcast. Yeah, right? your, your podcast. inventory of podcasts, yeah. right? Yeah, and if you want to do them season by season, like we do, I mean, uh, at this point, it's kind of arbitrary because what do we do? Like twenty episodes of season seven, we never, we never stopped. <laughs> We did that, yeah, season that. Yeah, yeah we kind of went a little bit long on that. Because um, uh, we normally do 10 episodes. Season, yeah. Right? I think we do need to, uh, I think season eight is special because this is the season that we go to Taiwan. Yeah. So you're going to get, uh, the, for the next uh, few weeks, you're going to get a few uh, episodes that are more normal. And then all of a sudden, you're going to hear from tech leaders and, and product developers of all these amazing tech for the next few weeks, including some of the things we found out about mm. from the tech capital, the little dragon of, of, of the east of tech, uh, which is Taiwan. You're going to hear all sorts of stories yeah. there. We're going to try to talk to as many people as possible. And then we're going to get into the fall where we're going to do product guides and, and, you know, like gift guides and holiday guides to help you buy gifts, That's which true. is going to be coming out really fast. Wow. Yeah, it's already, you know, already planning year, ahead. Man. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, for us, tweaking the workflow, I think yeah, I think we've kind of, I think we've got we we're there. Yeah, yeah, we're there. Uh, we've got the rundown, which is great because uh, we it, it's like I said, there's a roadmap of stuff that we can talk about, right, and not stray too far away from the actual topic. Because if we do, then uh, it will lose our audience. And sometimes when you go on a bit, or I'd go on a bit, and this is where co-host a partner. <laughs> Yeah, it really helps because then I say, hey, Stephen, and they'll kind of break you up. Hey, come back, Sorry. come back. I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> and vice versa. So it helps. And uh, rundown's good. And uh, also, you know, um, apart from the rundown, and we'll talk about the equipment later because uh, yeah. that also helps. Uh, with the rundown, you actually have a record of what you've done. Um, like I said, the Excel sheet of putting all your ideas in and things like that. And we can uh, plan uh, when to release and all that kind of stuff. So it's all good having some uh, kind of uh, a structure. Let's right. talk about the space too. I mean, yeah. this space that we have here is consistent every week. That means that that tripod basically is in more or less the same place every week. We yep. set up our equipment. We set up our mics. It's the sa exact same thing mm -hmm. every week. I remember when we were faffing around for the first few times, like, where do we want to sit in this room? But then we got it. And now um, it just takes us like yeah. 20 minutes to get all set up, That's sound right. checks, and, and then we're ready to go. And the, the way first, like season one, we were doing that from home. Yeah. We're not, we're using a podcast software, which kind of like half failed. <laughs> yeah, we call it Riverside.fm, and it is terrible for any podcast yeah. over twenty or thirty minutes. It just drifts like crazy, and you'll never be able to synchronize your podcast. Yeah, don't. Just so you remember that. Okay, so we we did try to offer our help, and we tried, closer, and uh, we just can. They blew us off. They couldn't get it working. They thought we were idiots. Yeah, in the end, then uh, we we kind of like we decided we need to get a place where you can meet together because having someone here physically present makes a lot of difference, yeah. right? It's like having a coffee shop conversation versus having a Zoom call. You are basically not 
paying attention on Zoom calls anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, <laughs> you your head, you're, yeah, your head is like wandering and yeah. you're thinking about other stuff. But if you're present, like Stephen's right here, um, you know, it kind of like helps because especially when you have talking about different topics and you straight away, you can bring them back and we have uh, like reactions, yeah. that kind of stuff that really kind of helps. So let, let's yeah. quick, uh, get back to a little bit more workflow. Now, mm. now that we've got this great workflow where we get in, we have 20 minutes set up, yeah. you know, chat about the rundowns a little bit, any notes or anything, add some notes and whatever. Uh, we have post-production. Now, post-production for us is two parts. Uh, number one, it's just getting the audio and the video to match and look right and then mm -hmm. rendering it out. Uh, we keep it pretty simple because it's just the two cameras. There's only two of us, so there's no point yeah. in having multiple cameras. You're going to see both of us in the frame anyway. And because we're, we're not like it, we're close enough to the camera, you can see my expression. You don't have to yeah. actually have a camera yeah. on me. That's right. It's kind of I mean, silly. You've seen some other podcasts where you have multiple camera angles. Like one could be on me focused on me and one another focused on you, yeah. another camera on focused on both of us. There's no really need to There's set only up three two cameras. of us, yeah. right? Uh, unless you know, it's a professional podcast in a professional studio. Hey, hey, hey hold on. We are a professional podcast. We've been True. doing this for two years. True. <laughs> but there's no need to spend the extra money to buy extra equipment for something that you have to do more editing, right? It's true because most podcasts on YouTube are actually listened to, not watched. Right. So the fact that if we say something really dramatic, then you're going to see what's going on. You're going to turn around and you're going to watch us anyway. Mm. Uh, but you also see both of our expressions, right? Rather right, than right. one person's expression, right? Because there's only two of us. There's no point. If there were eight people on this podcast, I can see the potential of having mm. a camera on each person. Oh, but yeah, because yeah. there's two yeah. of us, no. Yeah, um, if it's like five or six people, um, then yeah. 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 Multiple and, cameras. And we may, and there's also software that actually helped that out. Like we, when we were in uh, Taiwan last year, we mm. actually added a third camera angle virtually using a uh, software called podcast.ai. Um, oh, yeah. like, and, and that actually virtually added a third angle for us because we actually had different crops of all of our angles. Oh, right, right, right. You and me together, me and the guest together, all three of us together, just the guest. And mm. because we were mm. recording using, um, we'll talk about the roadcast a little bit but because it actually records multiple um multiple audio tracks it uses the other track to match the video up so if it was your camera you would only have your audio track attached to you and then it would have multiple layers attached to that yeah. now imagine if i was editing that all together having to switch camera to, to audio camera to audio <laughs> that would take me freaking forever forever because so this, you have three video resources three video audio sources and you gotta match them up yeah and oh my we god we have masters and everything that have to go together and we have to sync everything this software actually does everything for me in in when we were looking at it and it's gotten faster now it's, really it's even better wow um it switched the camera angle based on our expressions like reactions what like yeah, yeah, things and, like that. It'll switch and, back and forth. Yeah, exactly, and also the voice. So when I'm speaking, the AI camera, whatever, yeah. will focus on me. And remember, this is all one footage yes. for the video, but three or four audio separate tracks, so yeah. they can match it, right? So okay. this is this is technology that will increase your quality of your increase increase the quality of your podcast when you have a, a third guest, mm. uh, because now you need to have a camera on that guy, he or gal. He or she needs to be in the middle, obviously, because when you crop out those camera angles, you kind of need to reference the person in the middle. Right. So I know that in some talk shows, they have the guest on the very end and the host on the other side that you actually need to sandwich the guest. You actually need to make that work to, to make it happen. <laughs> I know it's a little bit funny, but it's the best way that we found that works for us. Mm. It's not conventional, but it does give that third angle. It does give that kind of excitement of cutting from, from angle to angle yeah. that a lot of higher, like a lot of better funded podcasts because mm. we are still a professional podcast. <laughs> so I, I think the main thing to take is, is not to uh, overcomplicate your uh, workflow and post-production, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it needs to be fast. Like we don't have a lot of time, both of us. So we mm. need to devote X amount of hours to this that make a lot, make sense for us. So for post-production myself, it's anywhere between three to four hours, depending how complex it is, including the upload, including making sure that everything syncs in the color grade, yeah. because uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but when you watch your podcast, sometimes the light changes or the lights in this room turn off. We, we've still been trying to figure it out. So maybe <laughs> we'll just leave it off for now. We should leave it off. We'll just leave it off forever. <laughs> and, and stuff happens, right? Uh, maybe, you know, someone out there has a lawnmower or something like that, and they're just blowing stuff everywhere. 
factory where it happens, right? Or a plane is flying over top of us because we're technically underneath a flight path. We are, yeah. Right? We're right by Vancouver Airport. Yeah, right, so, so. It, it, those are things that we need to address. And then we have to, uh, we didn't do thumbnails last year because I wanted to kind of do an experiment of mm -hmm. whether or not season seven would, you know, kind of just do its own thing. I might put podcast um, thumbnails back on after the fact, but uh, I just wanted to see if thumbnails made a difference and maybe they do, maybe they don't. I'm gonna put thumbnails back in season eight. Yeah, I think so. Um, but there's it's, something else that's also very important. That's once I have the post-production done, mm. linearly, Winston still needs to go through oh, yeah, and do yeah. time codes. That's right. Tell us about that. Like why, how do we do them? And why is that important? Again, this is where your um, rundown helps, right? So you take the rundown and of course, each topic has certain points where you highlight, right? And mm -hmm. emphasize. So we take those and, uh, and we go, I literally have to listen to the whole podcast, right? And figure out where those uh, topics or emphasized words and, and things like that have to be placed in, and especially that time. So you have to pause the video, check out the time, basically co copy and paste it into the, the description of the, yep. uh, the you know, the video, the timestamp. And then basically you said, uh, word it in a way that it's a, like a question, right? Yeah. Because then that helps when people search on Google, people are usually ask a question in Google, right? Hey, ah, what's this? Pro and, tip. Oh, yeah, you go. And then hopefully that then actually will go back to, or the search results will go back to one of the videos where we have a question, yep. right? So if you've ever watched, uh, if you ever search for a video that's well time coded, that actually has uh, human language mm -hmm. or even questions that you would ask an AI, phrase it in that way. When you see a video, it's actually already split up inside the, yeah, uh, the yeah. search results so that your video will get multiple views in different sections. Mm -hmm. We see that with our stats where we see a huge mountain of views on a certain section of our video. It's still considered a view, because they'll watch enough of it from that point on to get the answer, right? Yeah. So this is our answer to a question that we asked, and that's time coded as a question that you would ask. True. Right? So yeah. if you don't want to watch the whole podcast show, we're sad, but we still get to uh, yeah. see you. If you ask and, a question, um, yeah, you, you get the answer. And maybe hear your thoughts in the comments. That's right. You know? Yeah. So that's all good. And uh, you said something about writing engaging kind of description, something that can like attract them. Yeah, I, th I think that um, because technically speaking, uh, YouTube already knows what's in your video. They, oh, yeah. they the transcribed it because they can translate it into Hindi and then French and Italian and Chinese <laughs> as well too. So they know what's in there, right? Yeah, so say, part, yeah. of, part of the description is that it has to kind of work with everything else. Tags are that important anymore, but mm. if you're misleading the audience, like if that clickbait headline really doesn't have anything to do with the content specifically, mm. uh, you, you may or may not get, pen you may not get penalized by YouTube, you, you'll get the view, but you're actually doing a disservice to the audience. That's true. You're, right? you're, you're basically a fake title, you, right? You're, you're lying. You're clickbait. Right, you're lying, thing. right? Yeah. Yeah. So don't do that. Uh, and try to have the first couple lines of your description. It doesn't have to be long mm -hmm. to actually entice the view. And then the other thing is consistency, right? So launching podcasts on a schedule. Yes. Or, or pre-record them and putting them onto a schedule so that, for example, we launch our podcast every Wednesday at noon, right? Yeah. So, you know, if, it, if there's another time where we need to launch a podcast at a different time, then of course we let our viewers know. But uh, but consistency, I think, is is also very important. yeah. And the the consistency mm -hmm. also teaches the algorithm to kind of ramp up for the people yep. that are interested in this type of content, and they will start to serve it to them. Now, YouTube is uh, is quirky because they'll try to serve it to as many people as possible that are like you that are watching this podcast right now, mm -hmm. trying to learn about how to start a podcast in twenty twenty four. Yeah, and uh, if there are not enough of those people, sometimes um, you know the podcast might go under for a little bit and then come back up later because YouTube always wants to surface the right content at the right time. So even though this podcast may not blow up at on Wednesday at noon, it might blow up later on when all of a sudden people are learning, trying yeah, to figure out yeah. how to do podcasts. Suddenly, maybe in a, a few weeks' time, uh, there's a surge of people searching for, "Hey, how to do a podcast?" Then. Yeah, we get the views. Yeah, uh, and stuff. Uh, more or better views. yet, they wanted they had they asked a specific question that we addressed in the time code as mm -hmm. a human being. Like, what kind of mic should I use for a podcast? 
mm-hmm. or or how do I start a podcast in 2024? All these things are questions that people ask with their mouths. <laughs> and that's how YouTube <laughs> figures out which part of this podcast or which podcast to serve to them that will best meet their needs. Yeah. Because they want to addict you to the platform and never leave, <laughs> which is good for us. <laughs> yeah. Google's uh, so, AI and algorithms. I know, right? It's it's creepy. Crazy. And they know they know exactly what's in your podcast. So there's no denying yeah. clickbait may or may not work uh, later on because as the algorithms get more smart, unless you already have a community that is expecting you to have clickbait titles and that's kind of your thing, uh, that might not be a long-term solution. <laughs> uh, let's talk about equipment because yeah. that's always fun. Yeah. Um, I haven't changed a whole lot since last year. Uh, we adopted the Rodecaster Pro 2, which has been a fantastic tool. It it's has. always getting uh, updates from Rode, which is a fantastic audio company that does mics. And they've been a real supporter of creators all the way through. True. I remember a long time ago when Rode was just kind of getting into the space. They actually sent me, like this is 20 years ago. They actually sent me my very first shotgun mic. Oh, wow. And um, they they said, hey, use this in your podcast. It might uh, Use this in your, in your videos. It might actually improve the audio. And sure enough, it did. Uh, everything mm. sounded a whole lot better. And then they started sending me some other stuff like uh, lavalier mics for uh, mic yeah. packs and everything like that. It was just, they, they just really, they know. So, they know how to get an audience so the, in the community. What, what, uh, which company, I mean, where are they from? Are they? Rode is Australian. Australian, okay. Right, so they're Australian company. And uh, one of the beautiful things about the Rodecaster Pro 2, uh, mm-hmm. I won't pick it up because otherwise we'll mess up our show. Uh, you can look it up online as well too. And we might have a link underneath there for the FTC cl- ex- disclosure. We might actually make some money off, off it if you uh, buy some of the stuff down below. <laughs> uh, that's something that you also need to do if you are using affiliate links, make sure that you disclose that. Um, that's a it's, a, it's a machine that actually has profiles for all the microphones that you might yeah. want to use. So all the popular uh, mics that you use for podcasting, like the SM7B that we're using right here. Yeah. Uh, this is the other thing that I've adopted and I've kept. There's a reason why this is the best mic. It's mainly because it's really good at rejecting um, background noise in addition to not being so off axis that it won't pick up my voice. It's still in this area. Yeah. I, I- out of all the mics I've used, I've used gaming mics. I used HyperX. I've used the Elgato and um, other mics. Yeah. Uh, this this is the only mic that sounds so good. It's uh, also low handling noise. So if I wanted yeah. to pick it up and you know just do a podcast like this, I I totally oh. could. <laughs> right. Oh, you got a lot I of mean, the uh, TikTokers you know, now when I'm doing you know, this. If I have to do this, <laughs> you know, like uh, these are foods that you shouldn't <laughs> eat right now. It, like all the stuff you can you can totally do this if you want. That's true. So the low I, I do like noise it. is good, okay? Yeah. Um, but it does have some caveats though. Uh, number one, the Rodecaster Pro 2 does have the preamps inside to drive mm. this microphone properly. So if you were to plug it into a regular audio interface, like the one for your computer that has, maybe it has an XLR box or something like that, you might not get enough power to actually drive this microphone and it will sound garbage. Um, if you still mm. want to use this microphone and you don't have the right interface, you can buy something called a uh, inline preamp. Uh, there's something called a dynamite stick. There's a couple other out there that will actually attach to the microphone and it will add gain to the microphone. Add the extra gain, yeah. yeah. But it's really kind of janky. You want, want to kind of simplify, right? So if you are looking for something compact that can drive it, look at the interfaces that are that can drive it first, go by the specs and everything, mm-hmm. look at reviews. But also maybe if you have, if you really want to do podcasts and but you you know you're only going to be two or three people forever, uh, but you don't want something as big as the Rodecaster Pro 2. They do make a, a smaller one, uh, Rodecaster Pro Duo, I think. I think it's Duo, yeah. It's smaller, mm-hmm. uh, but it can still do two microphones, which might be enough for you. So there's other equipment options. It's going to be less money, obviously, right? Yeah. And uh, if you do video streaming or live streaming, tell us about the, oh, yeah, the Rodecaster they, uh, video. This is something new that they launched, I think, uh, only earlier this year. It's called the Rode um, Streamer X. Streamer X. So the Streamer X basically is a compact unit about this big. It has four pads. You can program them. It has uh, it accepts XLR, the mic, uh, headset, yep. and wireless. Mm-hmm. So Rode also do a wireless, um, lovely mic. That's kind right. Of, um, mic, and, and they're great. I love them. Um, you can actually wirelessly connect it to both all these um, 
interfaces, including the uh, Rollcaster right. Pro. They all use the same uh, yeah. FN link chipset inside the, this yeah, programmable. It's, it's really good. And uh, I, I, I like about that because you can carry that with you. You can do your streaming. You can also do your podcast if you want yes. because it can do uh, you know headset, wireless, and the XLR. So it has only one XLR input, but I think that's fine. Uh, who knows? They might do a Streamer X Duo mm -hmm. soon, you know, with a dual XLR. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, but that's a compact unit which you can carry with you. For example, if you're going to Taiwan and we're yeah. doing a live stream, we can do that using that device. Yeah, that's right. You know? The other thing that's really interesting about um, the way that they've integrated this is that if you were to mm -hmm. have an audio person on site or a producer, they can actually start working with your levels if they have, if you have the lavalier mic. So if you're talking to someone on set or something like that, and you're actually doing um, recording uh, for a, uh, like a short film or something like that, mm. having something like this in the video village actually might not be a bad idea. Yeah, I think you know, that equipment is probably one of the best investments it that you make. It does a lot. Because it does a lot. Uh, it has four outputs of the XLR, right? Yeah, four so outputs. Sorry, yeah, four four outputs. more virtual ones as well, too. You can even have a phone call come in and everything like yeah. that from yeah. overseas and accept uh, you know, like real-time calls. And the support is amazing because one time we had an issue with the, uh, the Rollcaster Pro. I think it was uh, the firmware and it was giving us like yeah. a clicking noise. It has a... And um, you, you updated the firmware and it fixed it. Yeah. So, or if it crashes or does something weird, it has, it must have this, but it has like a gigabyte motherboard dual BIOS. So it actually, <laughs> dual BIOS. yeah, it actually falls back to its original programming and resets itself. Oh, cool. If you made a mistake somewhere, like we pulled the yeah. plug by accident, the power bank just, it just flopped out for a second. Uh, well, by the way, yeah, um, Roadcaster works with a power bank, uh, same as your uh, Streamer X, same yeah. as the Duo. So you can run it off a um, power delivery power bank with yeah. at least 25 watts of power. This power bank, I haven't charged since our last three shows. Wow. And it's still running this thing with two high-powered SM7B mics. It is fantastic. It's a, it doesn't need a mains power. It can run off a battery pack. Yeah, and the nice thing too is that if All you're right. in an area where you don't know if the power is clean, you can run it off battery and you'll never and have a problem with feedback. Did we use the, the power bank at Taiwan last year? Yeah, we used it at Taiwan. I, had throughout it, the show. I used it throughout the show and we, never, we only charged it one time. And this was over like 10... 12 interviews. Ooh, bloody hell. Right? So <laughs> if you have the equipment, this is like if you have the equipment, if you have the money, this is a good way to upgrade your workflow because it just mm. makes everything so easy. Most of the pro processing for the audio that's already you're listening to right now has been done on the Rodecaster because it has a profile for the SM7B oh, right. that's built specifically to carry this mic and give it the best possible audio quality. So that's good. If you are, if you are past episode 21. And you want to upgrade? I think the Rodecaster Pro 2 and SM7B mics, you can get them used because a lot of people, like I said, give up after their third <laughs> podcast or their 20th podcast. And you'll see them out there for like um, less, um, not always half price, but you'll see them. The, the, the value can, keeps, right? The value keeps. Like, you're, like yeah. in Canadian funds, you'll get them for under 400, 350 to 400 used. They're new, they're 599s. That's still a significant savings. Or you can rent mm. them if you know that you're only do a, doing a podcast every week, 52 podcasts, and you can rent a pair of mics for $12. No, Why not? These mics are, are definitely worth investing. I mean, if you buy, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've, I think I only bought this like about, well, about a year ago. Yeah. And I haven't turned back since because no, every time great. I try to use it, uh, this is it. I, for streaming now, I'm going to be using this. For podcasts, I'm going to be using this. Even for audio recording and Zoom calls, it just sound you make you sound so much better and clearer. It's just an overall great microphone if you can mm. afford it. It's obviously not the first thing that I would recommend to someone that's starting out. If you are yeah. starting out, and I, we need to backtrack this a little because we want to widen the audience. If you already have a microphone at home, anything is better than nothing to get started, mm. right? Just get your ideas out there first before you worry about faffing around with all this stuff. It's not important. The important part is that your workflow is solid. You can put out a show every single week. Yeah. If you want to rent to kind of try this out, uh, I know for a fact that Long & McQuaid, which is a Canadian retailer, they do great rental prices. You can rent a mic for like a week to do like maybe a batch of podcasts, your first 10 maybe. And yeah. then you can decide whether or not this is for you, in which case you've already returned the mic and the equipment and you don't have to spend 600 Canadian dollars for a mic like this and $1,000 for an interface. 
Plus the accessories, of course, right? Yeah, yeah. You of know? course, you can always go um, used or secondhand. Yeah. You know, it's fine. So, I mean, there's ways to save money. And if you want the best equipment, renting is not a bad way to go. Mm. Uh, and if you have like, um, they'll do long-term rentals as well too. So if you know you need it for a month to get a bunch of podcasts out, and then you want to figure out if this is this for you, rent it for a month. At least that way you don't yeah. have the huge overlay. I mean, when we went to Taiwan last year, we had to rent mics. Right? I rented the mics because yeah. it was actually uh, better for us because if I lost one of the mics, there was insurance. <laughs> true, true. So there, there's that as well too. But now that we have our own, it's fine because we we found a way to carry stuff uh, back and forth. This is something that you may or may not need to worry about. Mm. Uh, if you if this is something you want to know more about how we transport equipment overseas to Taiwan, drag it all over the place and still have um, the podcast all work, uh, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to handle this in another show for you in depth. So there is the picture element here. Um, we're, yes. not, we're not fancy. We're not fancy, no. no. We're not using a red camera like, you no. know, Marquez Brown. Or an 8K. No, no 8K. Nope. <laughs> but we do need to have at least 4K and we do need a sharp picture. Yeah. So when we started the video podcast, we were using your camera specifically. Just, yeah, it's only a Alpha 6400, nothing fancy. It's not, even a, it's not even an A7 or anything like that. It really doesn't matter because I'm going to grade it after anyway. But mm. the problem that we had was that the picture was really washed out Yeah. due to the kit lens. You were kit, using the kit lens. Yeah. We, we were going cheap, <laughs> right? I I shoot Sony, Sony stuff, but I didn't realize how bad it was until I looked at the picture and I couldn't rescue it. There's, right. there's a certain quality of the lens that you can't grade into a cheap lens. Yeah, that's, so, that's why lens is so expensive. Yeah. So we started using this uh, $1,200 lens over here. This ah. is the uh, Sony uh, Zeiss. Uh, F4, 16 to 35. Uh, 16 to 35 is a good angle because it gets you into smaller rooms and larger rooms, and depending on where you, the, you are. The wide angle, right? Yeah, you have to have yeah. the wide angle if the room is small because right now it's about um, six, seven feet away from us at 35 millimeter because we want to mm. look skinny. But <laughs> if we had a smaller room and we needed to go all the way to 16, we could still do that. We would right. just have wider faces and look like we ate too much. Okay. Uh, so that's. Perfectly acceptable, acceptable, but if you're going to use the software that we talked about to actually dice mm. everything up and have like a third person here or multiple camera angles, we would need that sharpness because if we don't have that sharpness, the picture quality suffers because when you zoom in, yeah. you can see the graininess, right? Because we deliver this podcast in 4K, right? Uh, we don't have to. But we do because well, uh, some people feel that the algorithm favors 4K content. Yeah. Uh, it, w it would be faster for me to just edit in, in 1080. But you know, like this is something that we want to do, and you know, it's worked out so far. Okay. But mm. even if you were delivering in 1080, you would mm. still need to have croppable pixels. Ideally, if I was doing uh, 6K and I had the budget, I would actually have a 6K sensor or an 8K sensor because then that, that way I can deliver in 4K and it would look like 4K. Yeah, you but that's, that's another equipment investment which can cost a lot of money. But don't do it. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't do it unless unless you're raking in um, some sort of, you know, good kind of a, income or revenue from that. But yeah. Now, but, speaking of revenue, um, there's couple different ways to mm. classify revenue. There is uh, monetary revenue, like uh, sponsorships with brands. Mm -hmm. um, again, pros and cons. Brands will have a lot more say in your content. Uh, we loved working with Kingston because they basically gave us a bunch of products. They gave us some ideas and we kind of ran with them. And they just kind of wanted, wanted to see what we would do with them. Sometimes it was difficult because we had a show that maybe like the Microsoft show. Uh, Microsoft and Amazon show weren't really that interesting. It was more interesting to actually integrate their products into making this product, making this laptop better by putting these memory cards in or having mm. a backup external hard drive just in case your Windows laptop crashes, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, the, the announcements were great. Um, so you kind of have to pick and choose your battles. We did everything we can to make it creative. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Uh, in that respect, but we did a lot of really great work with them and we are proud of it. Um, also, sometimes you work with uh, a vendor or a sponsor that might not have any direct connection with your mm. tech, but then you find the tech angle, as is, was the case with Cal Tire. Yeah. Uh, Cal yeah. Tire is, one, is the largest um, tire chain 
in all of Canada. They are great at educating their customers on winter tires and everything. They're, they're keeping people safe on the roads. They actually started doing mm. uh, tires for mining oh. vehicles. Oh, really? So those huge, huge dump trucks. Yeah, yeah. That was their business. The, the, the tire, the consumer tire mm. side was just something that they did because they already had these relationships and it's worked out mm. for them. Mm -hmm. But knowing the difference between winter tires and summer tires and how they can decrease your stopping distance so that you keep your family and everyone else on the road safe yeah, and yeah. how that technology works was really interesting for yeah. us and for you as well too, That's, I think. It's, it's, it's very educational and also it tells you about you know, people don't actually know what the law is when it yeah. comes to winter tires. Well, exactly, right? So it's it's an also insurance. It saves you money, right? It because does that kind of stuff. So with that show, I I've learned a lot, especially about how, uh, especially in, in driving in Canada, especially in winter, right? And they don't teach you that in your driving test in Canada. They don't. It's not compulsory mm. to know this information as as it would be in like Germany or Norway, where they actually teach you that stuff. In Canada, it is kind of they don't they don't do that you, you're basically here's your license go buy go. right <laughs> unfortunately right so yeah. we, we get a lot of accidents that are completely avoidable if people were just educated properly and there are proper consequences for not acting yeah. appropriately on the road but you can mitigate those mistakes by having mm. uh, a tire that, that stops 20 feet yeah and away the, from the and, accident you know it, i've actually learned a lot about the technology behind all the tires tons you of know? tech yeah, there's a lot of tech behind actual producing a tire. Yeah, and it's not just rubber. It's like rubber composite silica. And there's there's little grit. Walnuts. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's treads and all sort of, what's the, what, what's the slits called? Uh, siping, siping for winter tires so that they you know, open up and they have more surface area all of a sudden, right? Or tires that wear all the way down to the bars but maintain most of their uh, mm. longevity like some of the Michelin tires do. It's just Really interesting. If you want to know more about tires, check out our winter uh, tire episode. Um, that's uh, somewhere back in the uh, last season uh, where yeah. it's closer to December. <laughs> I think uh, we can put the link down there below or stick it somewhere out here. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And uh, sometimes um, sponsors are kind of stealth. Like, I mean, we sometimes get sent stuff and we're like, okay, um, is this good or not? Like, I mean, I'm wearing the shirt here. Oh, did you? Yeah. Like, oh, you, nice. you have an outfit. I do. It's just... I it's good that you're not wearing the same one, but um, this shirt is actually really, really comfortable. I've been wearing this shirt for the last couple months since we uh, actually received this. It's a company called Fabioc. You see them all over Instagram and TikTok. And uh, they reached out to us and, and wanted to find mm. out if we wanted some samples. And, and they they gave us a pair of pants, uh, which are I call the buffet pants. I'm not wearing them today because I didn't eat very much. Um, <laughs> they but stretch. they stretch on the sides. <laughs> It's amazing. Uh, they have this, yeah, like if you need it, it's there. But otherwise, it's a good um, fitted, um, yeah. kind of dressy, kind of Did, did they contact casual. you because we did a, a couple of episodes on the fitness? I don't know. But uh, Fabioc isn't, uh, I don't even, Fabioc um, isn't an athletic clothing company. They're more mm. of like a lifestyle kind of, oh, right. um, you know, like casual wear company. Um, they're not a, they're not a Lululemon or anything like that. They're, mm. they're, but they're, like I've washed this shirt six times. It feels good. It's not Lululemon material, yeah. But what they've used, it, it doesn't stink. I, I wore the shirt for a week straight, and I was smelling it every day. And whatever they put into this, oh, <laughs> it didn't so stink. It's antibacterial, it anti-sweat, and you know, that it kind was of easy stuff. to wipe off too because I spilled oh, something on oh, myself. It's like anti anti -spill, anti stain or anti -stain, something like that. But I've washed it multiple times, and if you wash something, yeah. you know the quality because otherwise it would fall apart. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't fallen apart. Okay. So we might talk to them about maybe mm. sending us some clothes for Taiwan. So these <laughs> these types of things, types of relationships um, are things that you can work on. There might not be money today, but there could be money down the road. I think it's true um, that the content you provide is reaching out to your audience, reaching out to your fans, and kind of like, uh, I think stay stay kind of like to the point rather than kind of drift away and stuff like that. And, you know, when we talk about all the different types of uh, content we did, um, like say the Kingston one was good. Kingston was good. Uh, the Cal Tire, you know, so so there's, there's certain things that people are interested in and you can focus on those, right? And then kind of like build up and build up and that. And uh, don't don't be disheartened by, you know, having, oh, there's no sponsors, there's no money in that. Just 
it, do it as because it's your interest, right? And it's a hobby, it's an interest that you want to reach out to your fans. Uh, it, it, and now me and Stephen gather, get together every week and we talk about all different types of topics. And uh, I, I look at it as if it's, you know, it's a, a weekly meetup, right? Yeah. And the catch up. It's it's uh and and we produ- you know produce into a podcast for you guys to listen to, and um, just do it that way. Keep it up. Hey, um, you know? before we run out of time, let's talk about um, sponsorships for mm. shows. Like, I mean, we're yeah. going heading to Taiwan. How do we structure that? Uh, well, we have generally tech backgrounds anyway, and we were doing our own stuff way back, and we have all these relationships from in the previous or way back, and uh, from those re- uh, previous relationships, we kind of built build up our, you know, content and stuff like that. I, th- I think with that relationship, it helps, right? So say, hey, Stephen, uh, Winston, we, we're doing a podcast now. So are you interested? So, hey, yeah, let's let's just give this a try. And uh, first of all, we didn't know whether it would be successful or not, but it turned out to be uh, really good because we only had like three people booked for our podcast uh, at the time last year. And it ended up doing like 12 or 15 podcasts at, at Taiwan because people knew, people heard about this and uh, they want to be part of it. You know, uh, but yeah, I mean, with that, it's uh, it, you just have to like build up on those relationships and kind of like plug in it, plug in it. Yeah. Now, what I else? don't think that talking about their product of oh, the yeah, week yeah. was not the reason why people gravitated towards mm, us. Mm. Um, there was a very distinct reason why. And I think that it transcends all of the stuff that people would like, like, I mean, come on. you. You see one fan, you see one motherboard, you seen them all. It's a product. It's a power bank, that's right? It. Uh, like, it's, uh, why do I? Why do I care after this? <laughs> well, we told really great stories. We told we stories about people that had a really interesting uh, upbringing uh, in the tech industry, like Rob Teller. That's Rob right. Teller is the guy behind Height. He creates all the products, right? His his stamp of approval is required for that product to go out the door. Mm. And he was a forum lurker for NZXT. That's right. Yeah. Way back yeah. when. Yeah. So we actually didn't talk about products. We talked about the person and his how they stories. got here. Yeah. His right? stories. Or even Asus. He wanted to talk about fans initially, but man, he was way more interesting as the coffee guy <laughs> because he had a coffee background. And because every tech guy drinks coffee or a very strong tea. <laughs> It was interesting to actually talk about the different types of coffee, what he thought about that and, and stuff like that. It was just way more interesting than the product. You, we touched on the product. You love, you love your coffee. You had a great conversation. Had a with great that. conversation. Yeah. And this me thinking, what the hell's a cold brew or nitro brew? I, I don't even drink that stuff. But you guys are talking yeah. about that kind of stuff, which is interesting because then it opens a new kind of co- a topic. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. To- See, and then there was conflict because both of us gave Winston the side eyes. Like, what? <laughs> Who is I this don't guy? Drink that stuff. <laughs> I drink I drink latte and cappuccinos. So That's it. I think I think that that type of difference, like mm. for example, let's just put put ourselves on on the on the on the on the square here of 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 the types of content people put out. Linus would talk about the product all day long. Oh yeah, text and specs and whatever like that, and whether it's good or not. He wouldn't. He's not interested in this rep's backstory on how he became passionate about this industry. I think, mm. and he couldn't talk authentically about it because quite frankly, I don't think he cares. That's not his niche anyway. We differentiated ourselves because we wanted to talk about the people in the company that make up these amazing mm. products, right? Like without people, there are no products. That's true. And I think yeah. that a lot of people recognize that we were going after a very interesting part of the story that no one else was telling. And that's why everyone else got excited. At some yeah. point, we basically became the therapy session of all of the tech industry. <laughs> and it's way cheaper than going to the psychiatrist. I oh yeah, you. oh yeah. We had we had uh, Shannon from Patriot Memory. He just yeah. said, oh, I just needed to get out of that. <laughs> booth <space>. welcome <laughs> come here talk to welcome. us and he's talking about his uh his uh audio stuff yeah right it's all about mental health in and the then, industry i think we provided that yeah and then Otto from cougar he came and says oh man yeah and then we talked about his music passion is playing his guitars and yep. drums and yep meeting alice cooper at a brunch yeah. i mean these are interesting people <laughs> in the industry they just never have a chance to tell their story and we're so happy that yeah, we, we had an happy. opportunity yeah. to do that we, to differentiate ourselves from everyone else because everyone else is about the product 
That's true. Uh, we didn't care about the product. We cared about you. Yeah. <laughs> we cared yeah. about the yeah. person. And the, I think that that is what makes us different because when you have person to person conversations, not everyone can do that. I mean, mm, um, I, I think true. Linus has is, is admitted and some of the other uh, YouTubers have admitted that they don't like talking to people. They like talking to products. Tech people, <laughs> tech people never like like interaction yeah with. they're more introverted yeah they are you know but we i'm like i'm an introverted extrovert i I'm you know a, so i'm, I'm, I'm okay extrovert anyway because back in my old days and this is something yeah that he was a dancer <laughs> i was a dancer and colin briggs can actually confirm that yes <laughs> colin right yeah uh yeah i used to be a backing dancer so for boy zone yeah, boy zone. That's true. <laughs> Before they became famous, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. It's it's. I'm over a people person anyway. So with it, the tech background, it takes all types. But mm. you know, in order to be successful doing it our way, you really need to have genuine interest in who you're oh, talking yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that is what made it possible for us to get sponsorships to go and have these enduring conversations. I I know that uh, Kenny Lin from Thermal Take mm. was so happy that someone actually took interest in his bicycle his venture. No one in this company, I bet you no one in this company really understood it because they kept putting us in, Ken, in, in front of Kenny's view. But when Kenny realized that, hey, I'm an ex-cyclist, I'm an ex-bike racer, I know a little bit of the, about these mm. rivalries. I've just been out of space for a little while. He got really excited. You can see in his face. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's something that, you know, they're not just talking about their products or their company. It's about their yeah. passion and uh, what they're interested in. And, and we get to know the person behind the company or behind the product. Yeah. So uh, mm. I think that the future is going to write itself. Uh, we, I put a little line in here saying, what about the future? Well, the future is Taiwan for the next uh, few weeks because we'll be releasing a new podcast show from Taiwan and we'll have um, shows leading up to that, including probably a travel episode as well too, because we need to kind of refine what we're gonna take and yeah. everything like that. Maybe you wanna hear about how we travel as tech people. Uh, maybe that'll help you with your podcast if you want to take it overseas. So we'll have an episode like that coming up as well too. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And uh, I mm. think that, you know, like going forward and everything, I hope everyone gets some value out of this to start their own podcast. If we've got too high level or we're not detailed enough, just let us know what section and maybe we'll answer some questions in the yep. comments. We're always there. Uh, and of course, you can reach us on Elon's X, X. at our podcast show as well as Instagram Stand at down. our podcast show as well too. But the best place to get us to get our content every week, of course, is on YouTube. And how can people do that? Once in every week. Yeah, make sure you click on that notification. And of course, this uh, podcast is live. Uh, like we launch it every Wednesday. Every Wednesday at noon. And noon. Uh, if you hit the subscribe button these days, there's some fireworks show. Or every time I say <laughs> subscribe, that button is supposed to light up. I wish someone would tell me if it's working for our channel. Let me know if when I say subscribe, that subscribe button lights up it's actually really i've it. seen it on some channels already all right i don't know if there's a minimum qualifier but uh let me okay. know okay okay until then until next week um mm. bye bye see you soon bye bye